I'm going to share with you uh, how to stay healthy with Emory, especially at this uh, particular uh, critical moment. And I believe uh, right now, uh, the hottest topic will be uh, COVID-19. And in fact, in Malaysia, uh, we had, uh, you know, we have been uh, locked down for close to two weeks. And uh, the, you know, the, the, the case uh, keep on uh, increasing. And I believe uh, right now in, uh, in Europe and in uh, Asia, that is uh, the peak. And even some of the experts said this has not even the peak and it may uh, even become worse. And uh, as far as my concern, in uh, an Africa country, the, 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 the cases are just uh, started. So please uh, get ready, please uh, stay safe. And uh, that is also the reasons why tonight I'm going to share with you a little bit on how to uh, stay healthy, uh, how to stay away from this uh, uh, COVID-19. And as I mentioned to you, uh, since everyone is uh, talking about COVID-19, so I would like to also start my uh, sharing with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And I believe uh, every one of us, as I said, uh, every one of, of us uh, aware that uh, this uh, currently the world is uh, facing dangerous threat from COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, this virus is uh, highly contagious. You can uh, easily get uh, infected within seconds. And uh, the moment you get into contact with uh, the virus, you have very chance, very high chance of uh, being infected. And this virus uh, can attack our uh, respiratory tract. So these are just some, you know, just some information which I believe you have already known. All right. And of course, uh, as I, as I mentioned to you. Uh, right now, everyone is, uh, uh, you know, is talking about this uh, COVID-19, and even WHO also, you know, give us a guideline on how to prevent or stay away from this uh, virus. And of course, uh, as a prevention to stay away from this virus, the first thing that we need to do is to always wear mask. I'm not too sure uh, what is the condition in, uh, in in Nigeria, in Ghana, and in uh, and Egypt. I still remember uh, the last month, if I'm not mistaken, last month when I was in Egypt, you know, when I uh, walk in the mall, you know, when this, uh, uh, the local people look at us, the uh, Asian, they will start shouting Corona, Corona making fun of us. And in fact, uh, as far as my concern, even in certain country in European, back then, you know, when you are wearing masks, people start to laugh at you, start to humiliate you. But uh, uh, from the scientific study, from the scientific uh, study, you know, from the experiences uh, from the China and also from other countries, wearing masks is very, very important. And that's why I said uh, uh, in Africa, no doubt the virus, uh, is, uh, I mean, the, 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 the case of uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 has just started. So it's very important for you to uh, put on masks because the virus is actually spread through uh, the, the droplet from the coughing, from the sneezing. So putting on masks is a very important prevention. And of course, not only to put on masks, and it's also very important for us to wash your hands frequently. Uh, because according to some study, uh, from uh, some research, and this uh, virus can actually uh, alive uh, for hours and, and, and even for days, if it's uh, stick to uh, certain uh, different material, for example, if it, the virus is on the plastic material, on the steel material, it can actually uh, even survive up to days. So there's a reason why it's also very important uh, for us to wash our hands uh, frequently. And the third thing is, of course, to maintain the social distancing. And that is the reason why we are here today. And I, I believe uh, this distance is uh, far enough thousand miles away so <laughs> definitely is uh, you know it's fine enough but of course uh, talking about social distancing of course uh, you know uh, that's also the reasons why the country uh, has been locked down and social distancing because uh, you know according to this, the research also uh, if you are you are you are, you are too close uh, to, to those uh, who are infected the virus can actually travel to the, uh, the droplets and you can uh, get uh, easily uh, uh, this uh, infected, and you know when you look at this uh, uh, tree prevention, and it's actually there. There was a questions that come into my mind. You see, uh, out of uh, the cases, uh, the the infected cases, many of them are medical professional. Those are frontliner. Those are medical professional who are actually uh, 
you know, uh, the helping the patient. And if you look at the medical professional, they are also wearing masks together with all the suit, you know, with all the safety precautions. And yet, they are still the uh, uh, this uh, medical professional, uh, medical medical professional who are infected. So I believe, other than uh, wearing masks, other than washing hands frequently, other than the social distancing, of course, uh, for medical professional, they are you know they have no choice. They have to you know, stay in very close contact with the medical professional. I mean, with the patient. But I believe there is another thing which is also very important for us to stay stay away from the vi- virus, which is to strengthen our immunity. You know, right now, uh, every con- un- every country also claiming that you know they are they are, they are developing the cancer I and mean, the, this uh, vaccine. You know, we have uh, China saying that they are. You know, we have uh, China, we have US, we have many countries uh, claiming that they have uh, uh, successfully developed uh, a vaccine. If you look at it uh, carefully, even though you develop vaccine, vaccine is actually something, uh, it's actually not, nothing that, but a uh, weakened virus that has to be put into your body to stimulate your immune system. What I'm trying to say is that your immune system uh, eventually it's the, it's, the, it's the system that actually fight against the virus. So that is very important for all of us to strengthen the immunity, to stay away from the virus. And uh, talking about this uh, strengthening of immunity, I would also like to uh, share with you, let me see, all right. And talking about this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, strengthen of immunity, I would also like to share with you some of the facts that I actually uh, get from the report. If you look at the uh, the emerging and re-emergence of this, uh, this uh, infection diseases, my computer start in a moment. It's not working. All right. And if you look at the emergence and re-emergence of this uh, infectious uh, Jesus, we can actually uh, have an idea what is actually uh, going on. Uh, for the past one decade, you can find that actually something is actually happening. And when we talk about uh, emerging uh, infectious disease, emerging means uh, disease that are uh, that have not occurred in human before. All right, so this type of emergence, emergent is difficult to establish and is probably rare. And also maybe it has uh, it has occurred really previously, but affected only small number of people in isolated places like AIDS, Ebola, you know, all these are examples of uh, this uh, emerging disease and also have occurred throughout human history, but have only recently been recognized as distinct disease due to an infectious agent. What is important here is that according to WHO, WHO has warned in in its uh, 2007 reports that infectious diseases are emerging at a rate that has not been seen before, meaning that there are more new diseases coming up. Since the 1970, about 40 infectious diseases have been discovered, including SARS, MERS, Ebola, you know, chikun, uh, this, uh, chikungunya, and even the recent COVID-19 is also an uh, emerging uh, infectious disease. And if you look at this uh, re-emerging disease, emerg- re-emerging disease means disease that once were major health problems probably in a particular country, and then it declined dramatically, but are again becoming health problems for significant population uh, proportions of the populations. For example, tuberculosis, malaria, and rabies. If you study it carefully, you will find that. All these emerging and emerging infectious diseases are getting uh, higher and higher, meaning that uh, you know uh, even in the future we are actually uh, very uh, prone to have all these uh, infectious diseases. We are actually have very high high risk of uh, exposing ourselves to all these uh, infectious diseases. And of course, there are a few factors in this uh, emergence or re-emergence of infectious diseases. The first one, of course, is the use of antibiotics. Overuse of uh, antibiotics has actually created this uh, resistance among the bacteria. So there's the reasons why we have this uh, super bacterial, you know, we have the, this uh, the bacterial who can not be treated 
uh, by uh, antibiotics, and this has become one of the, the major problems. And in fact, if you look at this uh, tuberculosis, all these the emerging re-emerging diseases like uh, like what I mentioned just now, tuberculosis, rabies, you know, malaria. It has this all these uh, diseases has declined in the past, but it starts to uh, coming up, and uh, one of the reasons uh, could be the overuse of uh, antibiotics. And the second one, the second factor will be evolutions of the viruses due to the time, climate change. And this also happened to COVID-19. You know, uh, one of the properties of virus is that it can evolve very easily. Meaning that today, maybe it, it, it comes in this form. After a, a period of time, it will come in another form. And that is uh, 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 this, this, uh, this is the properties of the virus. And this is what happened to, to COVID-19 as well. Having said that, even we can find a vaccine to treat COVID-19, there will be another virus, there will be an either, another, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, pandemic or epidemic that, that would uh, 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 arise in the future because that is uh, one of the uh, uh, properties of the virus. And of course, the third uh, factor that uh, bring to this emergence and re-emergence of the infection disease frequency of immunity uh, throughout the year due to number one, stress. People nowadays are in stress. Stress from work, you know, stress from the family. And in fact, especially at this particular moment, fear is also another kind of stress. So do not panic. No doubt, COVID-19 is very contagious. It's highly contagious. But uh, the recovery rate, the recovery rate is still uh, very high. So do not panic and do not fear. Because when you are in fear, when you are panic, you are actually uh, uh, weakening your own immune system and you are, you are even more prone to be infected. So stress is one of the reasons why People nowadays are, are, are very prone to, to to be infected, and of course the second the second the reasons uh, will be improper lifestyle. And you look at the modern life the living, you know, or modern uh, lifestyle, you know, smoking, uh, drinking, stay up late. So these are the factors that actually weaken our our immunity if we compare. Uh, you know, the, the, if you compare the people nowadays and people in the past, you know, people in the past they sleep very early. You know, they exercise. They they don't smoke that much. That's the reasons why you know their their immunity uh, in a way is uh, stronger. But people nowadays we like to stay up late. You know, we drink a lot. We smoke a lot. So that is also the reasons why we our immune system uh, are weakened, uh, are weaker and weaker. And I believe most importantly, unhealthy diets also bring to weakness of uh, immunity. When I talk about un- un- unhealthy diets, uh, please look at what do we eat every day. You know, I've been to Nigeria, I've been to Ghana, I've been to uh, Egypt, and even I've been to Philippines. And uh, just uh, think of what do you eat every day, like in Nigeria and Ghana, you eat a lot of this uh, tofu, food, food, all this uh, very starchy food. And when I was in, uh, in Egypt, you know, uh, they are, uh, they are, they, you know, they serve us with uh, a lot of meat. And of course, uh, thank, thanks to their hospitality. Uh, luckily, I'm a vegetarian. I, I, I couldn't take meat. But uh, look, I mean, by looking at uh, what they eat, you know, this, uh, this, the, the diet is, uh, is very uh, unhealthy, I would say. So when you are taking in a lot of this uh, carbo, when you are taking in a lot of this uh, uh, protein or meat, uh, all this all this food requires sufficient uh, uh, enzymes for digestion. Uh, having said that, if your digestive system is not strong enough, uh, you will tend to have this uh, an unhealthy digestive system, and that is also the reasons why when your digestive systems are not strong enough, you will also have this. Uh, a weakness of uh, immunity and when I talk about this uh, unhealthy digestive system I would like to also uh, show you the relation the, the, the relations between digestive systems and the immunity 
there are a lot of st- studies uh, on uh, the relations of digestive systems and immunity. In fact, around 70% of the immune system drill in our digestive tracts in the forms of that associated lymphoid tissue, meaning that over 70% of the immune sy- system is actually reside in our uh, uh, this uh, intestinal system. And we believe our immune system, which is designed to control the microbes, is also in essence also controlled by the friendly bacteria. And the bacteria provide essential nutrients, defense against the pathogens, break down the indigestible substances, and even contribute to the development of the gut structure. And I believe uh, every one of us, we are aware that you know we have uh, this uh, friendly bacteria in our guts. It has to maintain in a in a in a uh, in, in a proper proportions. Your good bacteria must be at least eighty percent and above, and of course the bad bacteria cannot be more than twenty percent. And that is that is a healthy you know the, the this a healthy uh, microbial balance in the intestinal system. But because of our, our uh, unhealthy eating habits, we tend to create an environment which is suitable for the pathogens or the bad bacteria rather than the, the good bacteria. And when this uh, friendly bacteria, the number of friendly bacteria uh, reduce, it will actually start to give us a lot of uh, problems. And in fact, as I mentioned to you, an imbalance in the compositions of the bacteria will upset the relationship between the guts and also our immune system. And this will auto the immune response, which in turn triggers several inflammatory disorders such as inflammatory bowel disease, which is quite common, I believe, in Egypt. Because uh, recently I received uh, many uh, uh, cases from the doctors uh, in Egypt about this uh, inflammatory disorder, about this, uh, you know, irritable uh, bowel syndrome. So of course, uh, they are also they have also uh, many testimony, which uh, later maybe I, I can, uh, share with you. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, with the current uh, improper uh, eating habits, it tends to you know uh, give the uh, the you know, mix. These, uh, the compensations of the bacteria in the guts become imbalanced. And as I mentioned to you, as I keep on mentioning to you, the balance of the uh, friendly bacteria, the microbial in the guts is very important because according to a researcher from John Hoskin University, he said that there are a lot of data right now on this relationship between changes in the microbial community and different diseases, meaning that According to their sti- uh, studies in John Hopkins University, when the moment the moment you offer or, or, or put it this way, the moment the friendly bacteria in your guts becomes imbalanced, it will lead to many diseases. And in fact, according to the current scientists, uh, this uh, current research, they also found that different disease, different disease which give different proportions of uh, friendly bacteria or different species of bacteria in the gut. And this is what they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are studying in uh, John Hopkins University. What I'm trying to say is that if you want to stay stronger, if you want to uh, uh, maintain your immunity, it is very important for you to have this uh, healthy uh, digestive system. All right? And of course, uh, as I mentioned, uh, when we have this uh, imbalance uh, microbial in the guts. Uh, how do we know that uh, our guts, I mean the microbial in the guts is imbalanced? Actually, we can see it uh, through a few, uh, a few signs or symptoms. The most common uh, signs or symptoms uh, can be uh, constipation. And uh, as far as my concern, uh, in Ghana, in Nigeria, and even in Egypt, constipation has become uh, one of the uh, commonest problems among, among the people. And you know, uh, as I mentioned, uh, by looking at the diet that they take, by looking at the amount of uh, starch, the amount of uh, protein they can take in, uh, definitely it will cause uh, this uh, balance in the in the in the in the guts, the balance of this uh, microbial in the guts, and which uh, will lead to constipation. And as I mentioned to you, once you have constipation, uh, you will start to pop up toxins in your body. You know, just to share with you, uh, have come to uh, one of the, the, the research saying that you know the this uh, natural practice, uh, these uh, scientists they have actually uh, uh, conducted studies on the uh, amount of toxin that uh, 
the how 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 uh, poisonous of these the toxins when you have constipation. You know this research this uh, researcher they actually extract the poisons from those uh, patients who have uh, more than three days uh, constipated. So when they take out the poison, when they put the poison, they inject the poisons into the mice. The mice died right away, so you can imagine how poisonous, uh, you know, of this, uh, you know, uh, constipations can lead to. And of course, uh, according to uh, many uh, uh, research, also constipations also leads to uh, many uh, diseases like cancer, you know, colon cancer, uh, even the diabetes. All these uh, chronic diseases are actually associated with, with uh, constipations. And again, as I said, if you have constipation, you do not pick it like this. So this is a moment, this is a sign to tell you that your uh, your uh, microbial in the gut is imbalanced. So it's very uh, important for us to look it, uh, look into it seriously, All right? And of course, um, another sign will be bloating and also heartburn. So the moment, you know, after you have your meal, you will start to have this uh, bloating you start to have this uh, heartburn, meaning that, you know, your, your digestion is not very good. And of course, uh, when your digestion is not very good, it's also means that, you know, that there could be a balance of microbial in the gut. And, uh, and, and even for some of the, uh, the individual, they even start to, you know, develop this uh, skin rashes or even allergic to the food. And this is also a sign of uh, imbalance of uh, microbial in the gut. And uh, uh, another symptoms or another signs will be chronic fatigue. Uh, you know, even though you have enough sleep, but you still feel very tired. Uh, that could be a sign of uh, imbalance uh, uh, microbial in the gut. And of course, uh, uh, worst case scenario, you will have this uh, irritable bowel syndrome. So you also have uh, this uh, anti-inflammatory bowel disease. And uh, just to share with you uh, some of the best, I'm not too sure whether the doctors are also in this group listening. If you are here, maybe you can also share with us because I received uh, some uh, testimony uh, from Egypt. Uh, this uh, doctor shared with me, you know, uh, uh, he has uh, these uh, patients uh, having this uh, irritable bowel syndrome and also having this, uh, you know, uh, inflammatory bowel disease after taking uh, uh, this uh, Advil, you know. Uh, this uh, symptom gone, you know, just you know, they have this, uh, they have been suffering from these uh, diseases for years, and by taking Advil, so their sim the symptoms gone. So these are these are some of the testimony that I've collected uh, from uh, this uh, from Egypt, all right. And of course, uh, when we talk about this uh, imbalanced gut, so we have to also uh, look into the uh, the cause that the the the, 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 the reasons why we have this uh, imbalanced gut. Um, as I mentioned to you, one of the commonest reasons will be lack of enzyme. Uh, I believe uh, every one of us, we know that the functions of enzyme is actually to break down uh, the food into smaller molecules so that our body uh, can absorb the nutrients. And when you are taking a lot of this uh, starch, a lot of this uh, carbo, a lot of uh, this, uh, fatty food, so when your enzyme is uh, insufficient, your food is a very big molecule, it couldn't be, it cannot be broken down. So when this uh, food cannot be broken down, when it comes to the body and definitely it will cause digestion because your body cannot take it because you know the molecule is too big. And when it goes through the uh, the guts, as I mentioned, it will be a food for the bad bacteria in the guts. Just uh, put it this way, you know, when you are when you have something, you have food, for example, you have meat and you cannot finish the meat, you cannot finish the food and you leave it outside without putting it in the fridge what will happen the next day? the food will get rotten, right? so this is exactly what happened in the guts as I mentioned to you, we have a lot of bacteria in the guts imagine the food that we eat it, it couldn't be uh, uh, broken down properly when it goes through the stomach, it will become the food for the pathogens and when this uh, pathogen or this uh, bacteria when it starts to break the food it will, you know, it will, in other words, you, the, the food will start to get rotten. When it gets to start to get rotten, it will produce a toxin to the guts. And when the toxins is being produced, one of the self-defense mechanisms that our body has is to produce toxin, uh, uh, just produce the mucus to neutralize, you know, the, this, uh, this uh, toxin and to also to protect uh, this, uh, the, the, the lining 
of our intestinal wall. And when this happens, of course, the first sign will be constipation. If you have chronic constipation, if you do not get rid of these problems, the problems persist and it will be cause becomes a constipation. And over the year, it will start to pile up in the, uh, the, the, the all this uh, undigested material was combining with the mucus, it will start to pile up in the in the intestine, which will cause uh, we will we will form something called mucor plaque. Mucor plaque is actually a combination of digestive food, digestive food, and also some fecal material which actually stick on the intestine wall for, for a very long period of time. And when this uh, mucor plaque is formed, it will start to produce toxins to the body. The reason being is that, you know, just now I was saying this uh, food when it's uh, not properly digested, it will, you know, body will, will, will start to uh, produce the mucus and this mucus will actually, uh, you know, put the uh, stick together with this, uh, the, this uh, the, uh, undigested food and it will stick on the wall. And we know that one of the functions of the intestinal wall, especially the colon, is to is for water reabsorption, is to actually, you know, reabsorb the water into the body. You just imagine, when you have this uh, mucor plaque stick on the intestinal wall, every time when your body reabsorbs the water, the water will go through the mucor plaque and the toxin will also flow with the water to go inside the body. And this process is called auto-intoxication uh, intoxication because it will, it will go on and on, on and on. It's a never-ending process. The moment we have this uh, mucor plug, you know, the more we have the more mucor plug, the more toxin we will bring into the body. And when we have this uh, auto intoxication, it will bring toxin to the body. It will bring toxin to our blood, blood circulations, and of course, sooner or later, we will actually weaken our immunity, and eventually, it will bring to diseases like you know, diabetes, you know, like this uh, hypertension, and even hypercholesterol and even a cancer. So everything actually starts with lacking of enzyme. And that is the reasons why we have this uh, as well. And today, I believe uh, all of you, we know that uh, this as well is a plant-based enzyme. As I mentioned to you, if you want to strengthen, uh, to, to strengthen your immunity, you must always start with your gut. And as well, uh, definitely, is very important, particularly in breaking down the food. And as I mentioned to you just now, food has to be broken down, has to be, uh, you know, into a very, into a small molecule in, in, in a very small form in order for our body to absorb. And this is the functions of enzyme. And of course, uh, you know, there are, there are a lot of uh, enzyme in the market. What is so special about our, our, our Advel? And if you look at it, uh, the features of Advel number one is it's actually made of non-GMO plant material. I'm not too sure about uh, this uh, 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 Ghana, Nigerian, and Egypt. You know, uh, even in Malaysia, uh, GMO has been uh, one of the issues. You know, a lot of people we are, we are, we are quite aware of this uh, GMO material. And in fact, uh, many plant materials are nowadays uh, GMO. And for Advel, we are actually using non-GMO plant material and it's actually a plant-based uh, natural supplement combining group, uh, both uh, fruits and grains essence, which is actually rich in protein, carbon, fibers, vitamins and minerals. And for, for those who have attended my uh, uh, seminar before, I believe uh, this is kind of a, a, a refreshment, you know, this is a special course for you. And for those who are new, uh, maybe you can, you know, uh, uh, take a look on it. And as I, uh, you know, uh, explained during my the presentation, two of the very important enzymes that we have put in as well. One is from papaya, namely papain, papain. And I believe uh, this is a very important enzyme, especially for those uh, carnivores, you know, those uh, meat lovers. Because, you know, papain is a uh, protein. If you take in a lot of protein, <clears throat> you know, you need to have sufficient of uh, papain or proteins to break down to break down the uh, uh, this uh, protein into a smaller molecule so that you know your body can absorb. And according to studies, you know difference between human uh, stomach acid 
and this like carnivores farming estate that you know for carnivore like tiger for example they can produce three times higher uh, this uh, uh, stomach acid compared to human in other words if you are taking a very high amount of uh, protein you you our digestive system may not able to to, to digest the, uh, the, the the protein properly and that is the reasons why we need to have this uh, puppet so that we can you know have this uh, uh, sufficient of uh, proteins uh, to help us to break down the uh, protein and of course another enzyme is actually from pineapple namely bromelain if you uh, browse through internet if you look for the bromelain there are a lot of research on bromelain and bromelain is a very powerful enzyme because this is the enzyme that can dissolve the fibrin and the blood clot that block the blood vessel and uh, in fact you know um, when this uh, bromelain was uh, discovered you know they are, they are, they are people you know the scientists uh, were so uh, happy because you know nowadays uh, cardiovascular disease is, is one of the, uh, uh, still the major cause of death uh, globally and uh, this is uh, one of the reasons for cardiovascular disease is uh, uh, the formation of this, uh, you know, this uh, blood clot uh, in, the, in the blood vessel and by taking this uh, bromelain, it actually helps to dissolve the free brain and, and in a way it helps to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. And of course, uh, this uh, bromelain is also a very powerful anti-inflammatory uh, agent. And when I talk about this uh, inflammatory agent, and as I mentioned to you earlier, the testimony from this uh, chief, you know, for those uh, with uh, inflammatory bowel uh, disease, by keeping in this uh, as well, it helps to reduce the inflammation and that is the reason why uh, they can take away the pain, they can take away this uh, discomfort uh, due to this, uh, uh, this uh, inflammatory bowel disease, right? And of course, uh, according to the study, this bromelain can also uh, inhibit the proliferation of cervical cancer. And these are the enzymes that we have put in Advil. And number two, other than Advil, uh, other than enzymes that we have put in Advil, we also put in uh, prebiotics. What is prebiotics? You know, we have heard of uh, probiotics. Probiotics means uh, good bacteria. Prebiotics is actually the food for probiotics. It's the food for good bacteria. I, I used to say, why do we still need to put in prebiotics since we already have the enzyme? If you remember what I have presented to you just now, lacking of enzyme can cause the indigestion. That is, this is, is on the digestion digestion part. When it comes to the uh, this uh, the, 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 the 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 colon, when it comes to the friendly bacteria, in order for us to increase the number of uh, good bacteria is very important for us to feed them with the correct food and this uh, prebiotics or namely oligofructose is actually a water-based fiber that can promote the growth of the good bacteria and there are a lot of studies on this and in fact uh, recently there are many products in the market which use uh, oligofructose you know, oligosaccharide all these uh, prebiotics that's one of the main because a lot of studies has uh, uh, has uh, confirmed that these uh, prebiotics can actually, you know, helps to balance the intestinal bacteria and helps to also to, to re regulate the intestinal pH and most importantly, it helps to relieve the constipation. When I said it helps to relieve the constipation, meaning that your risk of getting the chronic disease, your risk of getting all this cancer is also reduced because the uh, you know, toxi the toxins can be expelled, can be discharged, so your your your, your body can, you know, uh, don't have to you know suffer from uh, too much of toxin. And in fact, uh, there are also studies on uh, this uh, prebiotic uh, also show that it ha has this uh, lowering uh, cholesterol and also lowering uh, blood sugar uh, property. All right, and so this is the reasons why we put in prebiotics in Advil. And as I mentioned earlier. Bromelain is very powerful uh, anti-inflammatory uh, uh, agent, and here, with the technology that we have, this anti-inflammatory effect uh, is also uh, uh, enhanced. Uh, as we know, as I mentioned to you, inflammation is actually you know is a body def defensive uh, reactions to stimulations. But the thing is that the problem is that when we have inflammation, we tend to develop pain. 
and by enhancing the anti-inflammation uh, anti property, it's actually able to reduce the swelling, you know, the area of the pain, and especially for those uh, with uh, arthritis, for example, for the inflammatory bowel uh, disease, you know, just to reduce the inflammation is very important, all right? And as I mentioned to you, and this uh, bromelain, uh, this adult, then, uh, you know, can is actually enhanced with the inflammatory effect, so it gives a very good effect in terms of uh, inflammation. So, of course, we need to thank you to this uh, patented uh, 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 this uh, technology, BioEnz and Smart, right? And BioEnz uh, is actually, you know, helps to uh, eliminate the anti-nutritional factor in the plants so that it can enhance the uh, enzymes activity and also it can increase the nutritional values of the ingredient. If you still remember uh, what I presented in my early uh, presentation when I was in the, uh, this uh, Nigeria and Ghana, with this technology, is able to increase the activity of the enzyme up to 470%, meaning that it's actually close to five times. You know, whenever we, 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 we choose for an enzyme, it's very important for us to choose for something active. Active means it can actually react very fast. When it can react very fast, it can also give very fast effect. And of course, as I said, with this uh, BioNS uh, technology, with this uh, BioNS system, it's able to speed up or it's able to enhance the activity of the enzyme up to 470%. And in combination with another smart, uh, another technology, namely SMART, is also able to optimize the nutritional value by, you know, micronize the nutrients uh, in the products. And thus, it can actually enhance the absorption, efficacy, you know, the taste and also the texture. And based on all these, uh, you know, technology, so they are all together, you know, we have uh, successfully uh, put in uh, five, five kinds of enzyme uh, in the products namely lipase to break down the fat, the protease for breaking down of the protein, the amylase for starch, antioxidant uh, enzyme, and also this uh, fibrinolactic enzyme, all right? And by putting in these uh, five enzymes, if you look at it carefully, lipase, protease, enzyme, uh, amylase is very important to take care of the, uh, the diet. You know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we are taking a lot of this uh, unhealthy uh, diet, by supplying the sufficiency of uh, enzyme, we are able to break down the food that we take in. So in other words, we are able to reduce the toxin that comes to the body. So when our digestive system is healthy, so it's actually in a way, not only to, to, to strengthen the immunity, to balance the, 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 the microbial in the, in the intestine, and it's, it's actually in a way strengthen the immunity, and also it can uh, get rid of, you know, it can also help to improve the uh, the, 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 the cholesterol, for example, the blood sugar, for example. So these are the benefits of putting in uh, all these uh, enzymes. Of course, people may ask, why only five times of enzyme? Why not 10? Why not 20? Because uh, there are also products in the market with 10 kind of enzyme. Why we have only five? As I mentioned to you earlier, uh, it doesn't really matter how many kind of enzyme you are putting in. The question is, how active is the enzyme? If you look at the enzyme that we are putting in, the three major enzymes, that enzyme is particularly important for our digestive system because uh, this three enzyme is very important in breaking down the macronutrients, the food that we have taken. And not only these uh, three kind of enzymes, we have also this uh, fibronetic, fibron, fibrinolactic like enzyme, which can also prevent the, the, the blood clot and also to prevent the cardiovascular disease. And it has been enhanced 470% of uh, activity. So I think this is this is the most important point because we can make it so active that it can react faster five times. I think this is this is this is uh, very amazing, and that is the reasons why we are getting a lot of testimony from uh, around the world. All right. So this is the the, the uh, enzyme, and of course, uh, as I mentioned to you, this is the summary. All right. So this is made with the patented technology with BioEnz and Smart, and also you know this is scientifically proven efficacy and also added with prebiotics and also with improved anti-inflammation uh, uh, property and this is also made of uh, non-GMO plant material. So in other words, by taking this uh, 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 
although at least it helps to strengthen our immunity and also it will also take care of other disease uh, through our digestive system. But of course, uh, when we want to fight against uh, COVID-19, uh, of course, for us to also want to, you know, uh, strengthen the immunity, there are also other things that, that, that we can do. And uh, let's, uh, all right, oh, okay, before that, I just uh, summary again. All right, so this is the benefits of that. I already mentioned to you, improve mental health and inflammation. All right. All right. Uh, as I mentioned, there are also other ways for us to boost our immune system. And of course, if we were to uh, really want to boost our Im immune system, as aside from taking care of, uh, of our uh, digestive system, there are also other ways. Of course, uh, before that, we need to understand what are the ways to boost our immune system? And what happens in our body when we want to boost our immune system? The first thing, if we were to like, if we were to boost our immune system, the first thing we need to increase the number of immune cells. Because the immune cell is just like the army. So when whenever your country is attacked by the foreigner, it's, it's, uh, it's under attack. Of course, you need to have uh, uh, more army or more soldiers to protect the country. So the first way to to boost the immune system is uh, always to increase the number of immune cells, to increase the number of soldiers so that it can help to fight against the virus or bacteria. And number two, of course, it's also not, not only to increase the number, it also needs to increase the activities of the immune cell. In other words, it needs to enhance the ability to fight. For example, you are giving your machine gun, you are giving this C4, you are giving a lot of this uh, advanced uh, uh, weapon uh, to the soldier. So, you know, when by, 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 by giving all these uh, advanced uh, weapons, the chances for you to win the battle is, is a lot uh, much higher. So that's the reasons you need to also increase the activity, it become uh, more competent, it become, you know, uh, more powerful to fight against the, the bacteria so this is the second way and the third of course is to increase the blood circulation and this is in fact what happened during we are uh, infected you will tend to have fever you will tend to have swelling your heart starts, starts to pump very fast the reason being is that the reason being is that it will actually bring more immune cells to the site just like i was talking about the soldier of course right now for example uh, this particular part for example in malaysia kuala lumpur kuala lumpur is under attack of course, I need to bring a lot of soldiers from other places to Kuala Lumpur to fight against the immune cells. And by improving the blood circulations, by all this inflammation, by swelling, you know, sweating, by uh, this uh, fever, is actually to increase the body circulations to bring more immune cells to the to the site so that you know we can win the battle. And this is what happens when we want to boost our immune system. So once we understand that, we also and incorporate this into our another product. This is the uh, this is the uh, wheat high, and as uh, as you know, wheat high is can actually you know it's a it's a it's a peptide. All right. Uh, let me just uh, again give you some idea what is peptide. And for those who are new, just give you a, an idea. And we understand that our cells, our body is made up of cells, and cell is actually uh, from made up of a uh, protein. Protein is a very big molecule, and the basic unit for protein is uh, amino acid all right amino acid is a single molecule all right so anything in between two amino acid to 50 amino acid is what we call as a peptide of course for peptide we have oligopeptide and also we have polypeptide in our case for we type and we type is actually fall under this category oligopeptide all right and of course uh, uh, if we were to talk about V type, also we need to understand about cells, and this is only some divisions. And we understand that human body is made up of 60 to 100 trillion of cells, and the body is a collection of large number of cells, and these are cells constantly divide, grow, die, and being replaced. And there are more than 250 million of cells divide every second, and this is a very important fact because body functions are always maintained by constant cell death cell regeneration. Why do I explain cells uh, when we are talking about this uh, system? If you still remember, just now I said, if you were to, you know, strengthen the immunity, you need to have more number of immune cells. You need to make the cells more active. And all these things are actually controlled by cells. And as I said, 
cells made up the entire body and if you are able to make healthy cells you are also able to strengthen your immunity or maybe let me you know just uh, go through this and i will explain it with you later all right and of course this is uh, again some short uh, information for you and when we talk about aging of course uh, as i mentioned earlier cell keep on your dying and also being replaced and let me start with that the rates of cell death is uh, faster than cell regeneration and that is, that is where we start to age and of course uh, when we have impact cell repair you know we have always our body has this uh, self repair uh, uh, capability you know but the, the the problem is that when your self repair system or your uh, self you know uh, this uh, self repair system uh, are impact so it will actually uh, 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 cause uh, 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 damage to the cells and as i mentioned earlier unhealthy lifestyle promotes cell damage you know from this uh, smoking from this uh, alcohol actually uh, uh, bring out a lot of free radicals so it to promote cell damage and this uh, will actually deteriorate the body functions all right and when this uh, uh, impact cell uh, uh, cell repair uh, occurs it will actually lead to permanent cell damage and also from the disease all right and uh, talking about cancer of course uh, cancer is a uh, is a form of uh, cell mutation all right and uh, as we keep on saying there's always a uh, uh, cell suicide uh, program in every cell. Uh, for cancer cells, this program uh, uh, goes wrong. I mean, something wrong with the with the cell suicide uh, 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 mechanisms. So the cell will keep on, you know, duplicating, will keep surviving, and that is the reasons we have this abnormal uh, growth. It leads to this uh, uh, this uh, 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 what we call this uh, tumor and eventually develop cancer. Right, and it's actually something to do. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, 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 gene and also something to do with uh, with the cell regeneration, and what I'm trying to say is that you know all these things happen is because of the cells, and the building block of cells is peptide. As the diagram as I uh, as I shown to you the diagram earlier from the diagram you can see your body is made up of cells, and the building block of cell is always a peptide. The reasons. Uh, you know, uh, if we have this uh, sufficient of peptide, it will help in terms of cell growth. You know, it will it, it will help our body to grow our muscle, grow our skin, grow our health, uh, this, this hair, and also helps our body to regulate. Uh, this is very important, especially in terms of our immune system, in terms of our hormones, and also in our enzymes, and also it helps to repair. All right, but if you are lacking of peptide. And this is what when you start to age very fast, you start to have wrinkles, and the worst case scenario, you will start to develop, you know, this chronic disease, malnutrition, hypertension, uh, uh, this uh, high blood sugar, and these are the things. These these things happen because of, uh, as I mentioned earlier, impaired cell function. The impaired cell function is actually due to insufficiency of peptide, right? And you may also develop a cancer eventually. All right, when you have uh, insufficiency of peptide, and of course, uh, the major four major functions of peptide is actually uh, no other than you know to uh, vitalize, you know to uh, uh, vitalize the uh, the, uh, this, the cells, to restore the cells, and also to promote the cells, and also to to inhibit certain uh, functions in the cells, and. People keep on saying, since the peptide is actually from proteins, can I just uh, acquire protein from the food? For example, food with high protein, you know, this uh, meat, you know, this uh, egg also very high in protein. Can we just get peptide from the food? Of course you can, but there are a few challenges. The first one, protein needs to be broken down. This one has been explained earlier. You need to have a sufficient enzyme. You need to have a, a sufficient enzyme to break down the protein. So that uh, your body can take in the enzyme, but the uh, modern uh, lifestyle, you know, modern uh, unhealthy, unhealthy uh, thing habits, you know, uh, leads us to uh, this uh, poor digestion. That's the reasons why you may not able to have sufficient of uh, peptide from the food. And the second one, of course, you also uh, uh, due to this uh, poor absorption. 
when your absorptions when you are getting older your uh, absorptions is not good enough even though you take sufficient of uh, food you may not able to to absorb it all right and the final one of course this is the lack of uh, uh, this uh, essential amino acid i have believe uh, this is the, the most important part, part. you know the uh, essential amino acid is the amino acid that you cannot produce in the body it has to be taken from the diet uh, modern uh, eating habits are usually you know, imbalanced in diet. So, in other words, you may not able to take in the nine essential amino acids from the diet. If you are not able to supply the body with the essential amino acid, your body cannot produce uh, uh, sufficient uh, uh, healthy cells because you are lacking of uh, ingredient. So, these are the challenging the challenges of acquiring peptide uh, from the food. And uh, that is the reasons why uh, we need to have this uh, 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 this uh, soy peptide. In fact, there are a lot of research on the beneficial properties of bioactive peptide from soybean. And this one I quoted actually from one of the journal. And according to the journal, as the as the diagram show, soy peptide has been has uh, you know has the long been studied and it's actually confirmed with uh, hypercholesterol. You know, it's a very full. Uh, very powerful antioxidant. It can also anti-aging. It helps to reduce the hypertension. It also has the anti-cancer property. It can also has the anti-inflammation. Also anti fatigue And in fact, it can also enhance the immunity. It has been properly studied. And of course, what is bioactive uh, peptide? Just give you an idea. Bioactive peptide means a peptide with active role in body physiological function, meaning that it can actually give active role in the body. And for our case, we are not only bioactive peptide, we are also bioactive micromolecule peptide. It's even a great higher. What does it mean by micromolecule peptide? Bioactive micromolecule peptide means something in very low molecular weight. It has to be very low molecular weight. When I said low molecular weight, it means that it can be absorbed directly because when the molecular structure is, is, is very less, it's actually in a very small molecule form, so it can be easy to absorb. And in fact, you don't have to digest it; it can actually go into the into the body directly. Of course, it has to be less than fifty amino acid, and in our case, we have only two to ten amino acid, and it has to be in a very simple molecular structure. And of course, it has to be significant, uh, biological, uh, biologically active. And this is uh, this is uh, based on this uh, criteria. That is the reasons why we. We names our peptide uh, this uh, bioactive micromolecular peptide, and of course, what are the uniqueness of our products? Of course, this is a highly active product. This is uh, it is come with uh, high absorptions and also with uh, high efficacy. The reason being is that we are able to make the products into less than six hundred thousand, which is a very low molecular weight. As I mentioned to you, one amino acid. The molecular uh, weight is about roughly about one hundred thousand. You know, in our case, six hundred thousand meaning we have only five to six, six amino acid. So this is a very simple, it's a very small molecular weight, and this is so simple that it can, it can actually give very uh, high activity. It can be absorbed into body very fast, and not only that, it also contains seventeen amino acid including the nine essential amino acid which is the most important thing as i as i mentioned earlier this uh, essential amino acid cannot be produced by the body it has to be uh, taken through the diet and by supplying the nine essential amino acid combining with those that uh, can be made in the body we have sufficient of uh, we have a full full spectrum of amino acid that can make any kind of peptide with which can make any kind of cells in the body and that is the reasons why it can actually activate the cells repair because we have sufficient of uh, uh, raw material for building every kind of protein in the in, in the body and of course it's come with very high purity with peptide purity up to 96 percent protein purity up to 92 percent which is more than 90 percent of purity and most importantly this is 100 percent absorption so i used to say 100 percent absorption means 
all the money that you pay on the product are all 100% absorbed without any wastage. I think this is very important. Sometimes people may say, uh, you know, you know, exactly the price is on the high side. You know, if you look at it, if you are thinking other things, for example, say for example, the option is only 50%, you are actually 50% of the money is actually, you know, wasted. But in our case, when we say 100% of the options, mean that all the products that we take in are actually 100% the big absorbs, which actually benefits the body 100%. And of course, this comes with 100% solubility, and it's also made with a non-GMO organic soybean. And how uh, this uh, V type can in enhance in terms of the immunity? All right, number one, it can actually increase the production of immune cells. If you still remember my pre previous slide, one of the mode of actions for the body to enhance the immunity is to uh, the replicating of more immune cells. Uh, if if you understand what I mentioned just now, peptide is the basic ingredient of all cells by providing the raw material to the body, definitely it helps the body to increase the production of the cells because we are sufficient of the ingredient to make the immune cells. And of course, number two, it also helps to promote the natural killer cell activity and also cytokine regulation. In other words, it also increases the ability to kill bacteria and viruses. And of course, as I said, there are a lot of uh, studies on it. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that not only it can help to produce more immune cells, it can help to also enhance the activities of the, uh, the immune cells to kill the bacteria. And number three, it can also enhance the blood circulations to increase of metabolism. We all understand that by increasing the metabolism, it's actually improve the blood circulation, you know, your blood circulation faster, you know, the heart will also come faster. So in other words, it can also, you know, the moment you are actually get into contact with any viruses or bacteria, you are able to deliver the immune cells right to the site to fight against the virus or bacteria. So in that way, it helps to immune, increase the immunity. And finally, according to the research, this uh, Soy peptide is also a very good, very powerful antioxidant. You know, uh, during this period of time, when uh, this uh, during this uh, pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, you know, everyone is looking for vitamin C. Just we believe that by taking vitamin C, C, you know, these are things that can help to strengthen the immunity. The reason being is that they are very powerful antioxidant. You know, same things here. Vita is also a very powerful antioxidant. So by taking in the uh, Vita, it also helps to enhance the immunity as well. And of course, there are also other benefits of this Vita as well. It also helps to restore the skin and muscle elasticity, and also it can help to strengthen the muscle. And uh, this is particularly important to eliminate fatigue, especially for those you know, uh, 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 have this uh, chronic uh, fatigue. So by in retire because of its small molecule, so it can eliminate fatigue quite effectively. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it also helps to regulate body fats, it helps to regulate blood pressure, and also helps to regulate blood sugar. Uh, maybe Sylvia, I still uh, in the group, maybe Sylvia later, you can also share your experience uh, in lowering the blood pressure. And of course, uh, also play uh, them into some of the testimony from my view as well. In, Using a blood sugar, and actually receive uh, many many testing, especially in using the blood sugar, uh, blood pressures, and also cholesterol. And also, this is a uh, uh, very good in uh, cancer prevention. In fact, if you Google, you try to browse online, you can see numerous of studies on soy peptide uh, in fighting cancers. And soy peptide has been proven to be a very good uh, uh, ingredients in preventing. Uh, cancer and of course they can also help in weight loss uh, by you know uh, by reducing the appetite and also by increasing the uh, metabolism and these are some of the benefits of the B type and uh, what I'm trying to say is that other aside from uh, in, in, in increasing the immunity it also helps to our body uh, to, to to stay healthy to stay away from the chronic diseases you know to, to, to actually you know helps our our body to to repair whatever 
you know the problems that our body has all right and of course uh, this uh, uh, retire also has been undergone a lot of this uh, safety test and always proven that there's no pesticide you know non gmo negative for other poisons negative for microbes and pesticide resi- residue all right so that's all for retire and in summary you know uh, during this uh, period of time of course uh, fighting uh, covid to stay away from covid-19 is just very important so to stay away from covid-19 of course the first thing we need to do is to strengthen our immunity so to strengthen our immunity as i mentioned earlier it is to start from our digestive system all right if we are able to you know improve our digestive system if we are able to to To, to get rid of the toxins in the, in the gut, we are able to balance the uh, microbial in our our digestive system. It's actually in a way to strengthen the immunity, and not only that, it also helps our 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 body to stay stay away or to improve all the uh, chronic diseases. All right, and uh, together with the biscuit type, by providing the ingredient to the cells, by providing the raw material to build up more healthy cells. Is uh, is not only can enhance the, uh, the immune cells productions, not only to improve the blood blood circulations, to enhance the, uh, this uh, this uh, 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 immune cells ability to fight against the bacteria. Uh, this uh, bacteria, it can also uh, have other benefits. All right. So uh, in short, if you want to stay healthy during this period of time, don't forget to take your Retire. Don't forget to take your uh, uh, LDL. So, if I believe if you take these two products regularly, and by also practicing all this uh, social distancing, uh, practicing this uh, wearing of masks, and also uh, 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 frequently uh, hand washing, I believe every one of us will stay happy and also stay healthy. I think uh, that's all uh, for me. So, I think I will end my presentation. So, thank you very much.